If you're anything like me, you'll be a really big fan of using reverb. I'm happy to use artificial sounding reverbs, and I'm also happy to use convolution reverbs. So, when Steinberg announced within Cubase 7.5, they've brought out another new reverb, well, I'm sure you can imagine how happy I am. Although, to be fair, I don't like to make it too obvious that I'm using reverb, preferring instead to have a more modern, drier sound, without it actually being dry. Anyway, let's get started here, and have a look at the new reverb that comes with Cubase 7.5. It's called Revelation. I'm going to insert it on our vocal track. And indeed, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it as an insert. This isn't my normal way of working. I would ordinarily use it as a send. However, for our example, and for Alacrity's sake, I am going to use it as an insert. Therefore, I'll click here and run down to the Steinberg folder. And then within the Reverb subfolder, you'll see it listed at the top there, Revelation, with the indication to the right that it is a VST3 effect. So I'll double click on it to insert it. And there we go, the user interface now opens up. As you can see, we have six main categories that we can adapt, starting with the global section at the top left here, where we adjust any pre-delay or any early reflection tail. We can move along then to modulation. There are a further four dials here within the control section. The output section is to the right, and then we can control our early reflections down at the bottom left, followed lastly by those seven dials that can be used to modify the reverb tail. Now, of course, you can immediately dive in and start modifying as necessary. Or, you can, if you want to load a preset, come up here first of all, click, and then choose Load Preset. And then this resulting results list will show up for you in alphabetical order. Now, I'm going to go for this one, Ambience Natural. And as soon as I select it, then as we would expect, all the parameters now adjust so that we get this Ambient Natural algorithm loaded up for our reverb. Within this main graphical view in the middle, you'll see a representation of a reverb impulse. If you want to change the early reflection model, it's set at studio at the moment, well, click on here, and then choose from these four options. Well, three really, if you don't count none. I'm going to leave it at studio, and simply because I've used it as an insert on my track, I do need to dial down the mix, otherwise we're going to drench our vocal in this reverb. So I'll vertically drag down my mix slider, and I'll take it down to about 15, maybe 20, well in fact, actually I'll take it to 25%. That might still be a little bit too much, but I'll start playback and then evaluate it from there. Here we go. Take a look and you will As predicted, the reverb is swamping the vocal too much. This can be heard more clearly now that we solo the vocal. I'll pause playback in a moment so that I can adjust the pre-delay. This will mean I don't necessarily have to change the reverb tail. It will mean that there will be some dry air, as it were, prior to the reverb kicking in. Okay, now I've evaluated and paused playback. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to adjust my pre-delay. Now, to be honest, it would be nice if we could tempo sync this. However, a quick calculation will mean that at this tempo of 152 BPM, if I dial in a pre-delay of around about 99 or just below 100 milliseconds, that dead air before the reverb kicks in will be pretty much tempo synced. Clearly, I can use this pre-delay slider for this, or double-clicking up here, I can type the millisecond value in to be more immediately accurate. I'll restart playback and evaluate further. Notice the graphical view of the reverb impulse here has got a dark vertical strip just before the waveform. As I increase the pre-delay, and I'm going to increase it to multiples of 99, or possibly 100 for convenience, then you'll see that vertical dark strip increase. I'll exaggerate this by taking it up even further, just above 400 milliseconds at 412.5. From... Now, because I do want to manually tempo sync this, I'll double click in here once more and accurately put in 400 milliseconds. I'll reduce to 25% this early reflection slider, and once more we'll begin playback to evaluate again. Take a look and you will find something With this pre delay being much more pronounced, I think I'll reduce the output level for the mix. I'll take it down to 10%. And then unsolo the vocal, so we hear what it sounds like with the mix. Listening to it now, I think I can afford to increase the mix slider, maybe up to about 17%. 
or if I want to double click in here, I can change it. I'll change it to 15%. If I also want to add in some modulation, well, first of all, I need to click this activate button. So now it says on. Before I adjust the rate or the depth, I'll solo the vocal once more so I can distinguish much more accurately what this does to the sound. Although this is very subtle, what this modulation is doing is creating slight pitch modulation to the reverb tail. I'll leave the rate as it is, but with the depth, the high percentage value I dial in will increase the intensity of this pitch modulation. Something snapped inside my mind, broken way beyond repair. Adjusting the low cut or the high cut here allows you to reduce in volume the early reflections from either the low or the high frequencies. Notice that as I adjust the delay for the reverb tail, we also get another one of those visual clues, whereby we see a vertical strip there, visually indicating by how much we have increased this delay time by. I'll bring the mix back in again. And I need a place to hide, cause I can't swim against this tide, from the depths of my despair. Okay, so that's a quick run through Revelation then, and I think that if you tempo lock it, even though you have to do it manually, if you do lock it to your project tempo, then you can hear that we do have great flexibility and control over the reverberated outcome.